afterwards you can just go to healthcmi.com there's a short quiz you can take it as many times as you like uh, most people get it on the first try and then you get a little certificate of completion keep it for four years and it's good for every CEU in the United States and Canada PID is the inflammation of the pelvic organs and or the connective tissues and it's usually caused by an infection so let's take a look at some of the surrounding areas here of the pelvic organs and connective tissues notice the broad ligaments so there's a huge area between the, the uterus and the ovary where you've got that sweeping broad ligament and that can be infected in a multiplicity of ways backing up just a little bit and taking a look at the overall perspective on PID we see that PID is a group of disorders. Now we know that it's inflammation of the female pelvic organs and connective tissues uh, caused by an infection. And this infection may involve a single organism, let's say a virus, a bacteria, a pinworms, some type of parasite, or it may be polymicrobial. So a variety of factors can be involved in PID and they can combine to create different types of disorders as classified by Western medicine. And PID includes disorders such as cervicitis, that is cervical inflammation, endometritis, that is uterine inflammation, salpingitis, fallopian tube inflammation, ophritis, ovarian inflammation, and of course inflammation or infection of either or both of the broad ligaments. These are the uh, lateral ligaments composed of peritoneum passing from the sides of the uterus to the walls of the pelvis. General symptoms are abdominal pain and vaginal discharge. And physical exam is notable for cervical motion tenderness. So this is done usually at a gynecologist's office, uh, the cervical exam, uh, pelvic exam will then reveal cervical motion tenderness when a movement is applied to the area. And it often indicates PID, but can also indicate things like ectopic pregnancy or ovarian cysts. The differential diagnostics in Chinese medicine vary slightly. Uh, of course, in Chinese medicine, the lower abdominal pain and vaginal discharge, leucorrhea, are the predominant symptoms, as in biomedicine. And we say that PID is the invasion of damp heat and toxins causing qi and blood stagnation in the lower burner, at least in the acute phase. And then when we go to chronic, that of course is when things like qi and blood and yin deficiency come into play. So normally we speak of PID in terms of being caused by an external pathogen. Here we see that inflammation of the pelvic region organs can also be caused by liver qi stagnation turning into fire. And remember that qi stagnation of the liver can also accumulate in the liver and gallbladder as damp heat. So qi stagnation turning into liver and GB damp heat. Another problem that creates the conditions for PID. So heat in the blood is an important concept wherein both external pathogens and liver qi stagnation turning into fire can create heat in the blood and these are the conditions that create the mental restlessness, the bleeding uh, involved in PID. Normally we think of liver qi stagnation turning into fire in terms of liver fire blazing upwards, maybe affecting the lung, maybe cough with uh, bloody sputum, or even uh, making redness of the eyes, or even affecting uh, the ears and causing an infection in the ears. So we have to look at these internal causes as well. And liver qi stagnation is important to regulate in the case of PID to prevent any exacerbation of this illness. So why is the role of an, a licensed acupuncturist herbalist so important in the treatment of PID? We'll take a look at some of the facts involved. We'll look at undiagnosed PID and we'll also look at some forms of asymptomatic PID 
and how we can spot that using our eye for damp heat, heat and toxins, things like this, and of course lingering pathogenic factors playing into qi and blood deficiency. I want to talk a little bit about, in the last couple minutes here, liver qi stagnation. We definitely see liver qi stagnation turning into heat. And this is something that's a little different than uh, the infectious idea. Mostly what we're talking about here are chronic infections, lingering pathogenic factors, and clearing them. However... That is the general cause of PID. There are definitely not only endogenous contributing factors here, but causative factors. So liver cheese stagnation can fester and create fire enough to initiate PID as a problem. We're not going to be able to, it, with lab results, measure some type of bacterium or parasite or pinworm, what have you, it can be liver chi stagnation transforming into fire. So this is something to look for. It causes heat in the blood, and that leads to our bleeding. And that's, uh, again, the same signs and symptoms, although lab results may not pick it up. And that's something that does get overlooked. I know we spent most of the time today speaking to PID, PID in the Western medicine sense in terms of uh, it being something that's caused by an external pathogen, but then we have to look to the endogenous causes as well. Mm -hmm.